Fred here and welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. This is part two of my Plate of Truth series where I'm testing some more um, solvents. Um, the first part was trying to see which solvents work best for removing lead. And this episode, part two, is whether or not if you leave these solvents on the plate for an hour, would they cause any damage? Again, Like I said, I was going to put back all these products back onto the squares, let them sit for a while. So the first one again, this, uh, oopsie, this, uh, foaming board cleaner. Make sure you shake this product up before using it. I'll set this on number three. There we go. Next is Pro Shot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you, you could watch all the fun I'm having here doing this. Pro Shot on number four. I got my notes here what I'm putting on what. Number five is the Remington 40X bore cleaner with the stupid spout that you could never get out. Remington is uh, number five. Number six. Number six is the Remington Bore Bright. Spray that here. And this goes on. What did it go on? Number six, right? Okay. It's number seven. Number seven is Ballastol. Tell you right now, I've left ballastol sitting on this plate for a long time, and it it did a very good job preventing rust. And it didn't harm the plate. Number eight, Smith and Wesson. Or an action cleaner. Now when you spray this, it comes out with authority. It really squirts um, a lot in a pretty straight, sharp stream. I'm trying not to get it all over everything on my desk here. I would do it in my garage, but it's kind of cold. All right. Number nine. I'm sorry. Next is number thirteen, which is. Another becoming my uh, favorite. <laughs> I just love the smell of this stuff too. Number 13. Hoppies. Number 9. Alright. Number 14 is Impro. Number 7. Number 14. Number 14. Again, I'm going to put these in the in the show notes below. What goes on each square. So if I mispronounce something, or, which I do a lot, you can uh, read it below. Next is Hoppy's Elite. And that goes on number 15. And last but not 
least number 16 is the Butch's Boar Shine. Now, I speculate this is the only one that's going to damage, only because um, when you open this, it hits you with ammonia like no tomorrow. This stuff is potent um, stuff. Ooh, strong. That's number 16. So I'm speculating that this might cause a little bit of etching, a little problem. Alright. So, we're going to let these solvents sit and see if they cause any problems. So, we people in the gun community need to know, I got a little bit of a drip here, we need to know if any of these products can ruin our favorite firearms, which uh, I don't want to see any of you get a, a firearm screwed up. By the way, in the last test, if you're tuning in just on part two here, this, this rune square here, number 18, was leaving this rust remover on for 10 minutes. Birchwood KC blue and rust remover. The instructions say, you know, take it off in two minutes. Trust me, you want to take it off in two minutes or you're going to end up with a big problem. Now, if you're removing the bluing off your barrel with this stuff and you get a little inside your barrel, um, you better clean that out right away. As a matter of fact, if you take, if you use this on your barrel, just run some patches through it after, just in case. Okay, I'm going to come back in about an hour right now. It's, uh, <laughs> let me get the watch on the camera here. It looks like it's 7.35, so we'll come back like 8.35, and we'll see how it looks. By the way, because I know someone's going to ask, this is a Casio G-Shock. I love these things. This is like my fourth one. My loving wife got me this one for Christmas, and I really appreciate it. I love these. This thing is solar powered. It's uh, set by the uh, atomic clock through a radio. It receives the uh, time tick from you know some some place, so it's atomically always correct. And you can bang the living crap out of these, and they just don't die. Um, and I like how the crystal is very deep. So I mean, I don't even have a scratch on it because I can never bang it because it's so far in. So, I've dropped these things like 50 feet and they don't, do not break. Anyway, there you go. Just in case I would ask. So, see you in about an hour. So, the first thing I do is grab a tissue. And wipe this stuff off. And see if we have any kind of damage to the metal after leaving these products on for um, an hour and again to show you it's an hour right there it might be like uh, a couple of minutes short but I need to like start wrapping everything up here so let's take a close look I'm going to try to get close and pan through I'm not seeing any kind of etching. Again, you can still see some of the lead on some of these. This is after sitting for an hour. See number seven. There's almost none left. That was, um, where's my paper that I had all these things on? All right. Um, Ballastol. Number four still had a little bit left. Pro shot. Number three is clean. So I don't see any kind of damage to any metal. I was kind of concerned about what I read about Butch's bore shine. That would have been this plate here. And I'm really not seeing or even feeling any kind of problem with the metal. Barely any lead left. I bet you if I rub this hard enough. 
Nope. <laughs> it didn't come off. I'll tell you one thing that does work pretty good. An eraser will definitely take some lead off. Just to give you an example. Let's see. Where do we have a lot of lead left? There's number five. Number five was the Remington 40X. Watch this. Grab a pencil, eraser. I'm not going very heavy at all. That's it. Oop, there's still some left, but um, pretty much gone. I could probably get the rest of it just a little bit more. So, if you really need to get the lead out of your barrel, go up and down with an eraser. <laughs> no, don't do that. Just kidding. <laughs> but I guess that's why they put uh, these erasers on top of a lead pencil. They obviously can erase lead pretty good. I wonder if they can invent something like an eraser that you could shove down your barrel to get lead out. Without leaving all kinds of eraser in your bore and the rifling. Okay, I'm just rambling. I'm getting stupid. So, no damage anywhere from any of these products after leaving them in for an hour. And I had a um, a video a while back where I tested. I think I let uh, I let these products sit for a day or two. But when you let them sit for you know any longer than an hour or two, they really start drying up. So it really doesn't do. You know, they really can't uh, work any further than that. Once they dry up, you know, that's it. They're dry. They're not working anymore. So I figured, you know, an hour with these particular products would be a fair test. And we have no damage. So, there you go. Okay. Just got back from the garage. I wanted to grab some sandpaper and some steel wool. And, again, we're learning. We're... we're want to try things out, learn things here, live on camera. So again, um, to summarize where we are so far, number 18. Remember number 18 in part 1, we left the rust remover on there too long. 10 minutes and we, <laughs> we did some damage. I was wondering if uh, I could get this off. So I tried some Hoppy's Elite, just rubbed that on there didn't make a difference at all. I'm going to try some steel wool. This is a quad zero. Let's see if that can help at all. I'll let you look at what I'm doing here. Put some light. Um. Well, you can't feel anything. It's smoothed out, but it's definitely still dark. <sighs> wow. This really uh, does some damage. Now, I have some sandpaper. Well feels like about 150 grit. And I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to clean up my blade of truth here anyway, so so I'll uh, lightly try to restore my blade of truth. Of course you would, <laughs> if you're doing this to your gun, you're, you're so freaking screwed. Alright. So, that got it off, but now I have um, some nice brush marks on there. 
and it's going to take some work. And uh, probably a sequence of um, some different sandpapers to get my uh, plate of truth restored. So, uh, yeah. made myself some work. So, again, thank you very much for joining me here on the Gear Up Session channel. I appreciate every friend, viewer, and subscriber here on YouTube.